Hello watch enthusiasts and welcome to Watch Chronicler. Just over a year ago, I reviewed the Olekenweiss C1000, a watch which carried an awful lot of promise from a Swiss brand serious about actually making watches in Switzerland and with a rich heritage. Despite being based on a watch from the 1960s, no design elements were carried over in their original forms, yet that watch still carried all the charm of the original 1960s Olekenweiss Caribbean 1000. On its quest to recreate models from its past, this Zurich-based brand has now turned its attention to another piece of its history, the Ocean Graph. Now technically speaking, the Ocean Graph isn't actually a new watch for 2021, but rather a 2020 release which carries over a lot of the design cues of the C1000 1000m dive watch from the year before. Then again, given the history behind this rather remarkable piece, this isn't much of a surprise. You see, Olek and Weiss was founded in 1956 by, predictably, Albert Weiss and Joseph Olek, who sold third-party Swiss watches before making their own with a specialisation for technical pieces. Whilst Olek and Weiss did produce an assortment of aviation field pieces over the years, it was their dive watches in the 1960s and 70s which made them famous, alongside other key dive watch producers, including the Yeni family, Doxa, Aquastar and Squale. The first dive watch from the brand surfaced in 1959, with a 200m water resistance, broad arrow hands and Zodiac-esque dial elements. This was followed in 1962 by the Aquaguard, with the same water resistance but now with a skin diver style case, Rolex-esque dial, and 12-hour bezel. Importantly, this watch moved the brand to use ETA movements in their pieces, and thus cemented the progression of watches into the future. However, it was the 1964 Caribbean 1000 which really made the brand famous. You see, this watch was developed in conjunction with Yeni, whose 702 case was conceived for this watch. This featured some interesting elements such as a fully polished surface, stubby divergent lugs for strength, and a bezel insert surrounded by a wide steel rim. Most importantly, this was the first 1000m dive watch, and to the best of my knowledge and research, the first monoblock case watch for the express function of diving. However, Oleg and Weiss wanted to add to the watch, and so released the Ocean Graph. This watch retained almost all the design and engineering of the Caribbean 1000, but added a key element, the bezel. This element, which I will explain in more detail later, was redesigned to give the maximum information to a diver in a period when going deeper, for longer, and with greater safety was becoming seriously important. In 2020, this reference was brought back by the Ocean Graph, which was based on the C1000 in the existing catalogue. As a result of this connection, it has a similar demeanour as a fundamentally reimagined solution to the problems faced by its 1960s counterpart. As such, this watch features what at first glance is an entirely different case to the original from the 60s, with straight lugs, a fully brushed surface, and an opening case bag. The dimensions are as follows. The watch is 39.56mm wide, 49mm from lug to lug, 13mm thick to the top of the bezel, and a full 15.8mm tall to the top of the crystal. This crystal, by the way, is an anti-reflective 5.6mm thick double-domed sapphire unit with an absolutely stunning bevel around the edge and a level of toughness which appears capable of bearing several times the watch's rated 1000 meters. However, this watch is actually much closer to the original in intent than either a Rolex Submariner or Omega Seamaster 300 is to its ancestor today. Sure, the lugs are straight, not divergent, yet truth be told, the originals are a total nightmare for bracelet installation, and the flat end and sharp edge which softens into a curve on the lugs are both retained. Additionally, the surface is now entirely brushed rather than having the polished surface in period, but here too there's a very good reason for the change. A brushed finish such as the extremely fine one applied to this watch will invariably conceal scratches better and won't blind you under direct sunlight, yet in period this finish was very susceptible to corrosion due to the steel used. Meanwhile, the case back, now screwed on, makes servicing cheaper and less time consuming as, with a solid back, the front of the watch has to be entirely removed if you reassemble the watch and find that it isn't keeping time once in situ. As a result, you can probably see that the spirit of a proper tool has been maintained by adding these modern details to the watch. So the spirit of the original has been maintained, but nevertheless, a lot of advancement has also taken place. Just look at the case back. It's delightfully brushed and bears the brand's logo deeply engraved into its surface. The crown is another area which is very well made, as, to guarantee water resistance, quadruple gaskets have been fitted into a very well-machined 6.1mm design, which extends 4.5mm from the case side for an easy grip, and for a big crown sort of look from that period of dive watches. 
On top we see a propeller logo very deeply cut into the surface of the steel, which is a key change from the numbered crowns on the first 56 C1000 models produced. But at this point I've beaten around the bush enough, it's time to discuss the bezel. The C1000 from my last review featured a bezel with a very fine coin edge and a luminous crystal insert, with diving graduations and a steep metal rim around its edge for protection. This was also the case on the vintage equivalent, and as per that precedent, the ocean graph widens that insert by about a third to give a simple metal lip around the coin edge. The reason for this is to add space for three graduations on the bezel under a single, similar crystal insert. The bezel insert, at first glance, may seem rather hard to understand, but actually represents a very clever piece of design. In essence, it provides both the no decompression limits of a DOXA bezel and the maximum depth indications of an early Omega Seamaster 1000, without the addition of a calculation table which would be needed for a watch like an Aquastar Deep Star, albeit that watch does have more functions available to a diver, but with the additional inconvenience. Let me explain how this works. The central ring you see shows the standard diving 60 minutes and indications of maximum dive depth in meters for any given time. The middle ring shows decompression times for the respective depths on the central ring, and the outer ring shows the decompression period at 3 meters, which a diver has to make in relation to the diver's depth and duration, as shown on the other graduations on the bezel. In many ways, this bezel gives the same curious appeal of those rotating perpetual calendars you can often pick up in maritime shops. It's a very clever, but very simple invention. And whilst this is all extremely clever, there is a problem which, depending upon the buyer, may steer some in the direction of the more simple C1000, the legibility. What you'll see underwater, I fear, is not a set of graduations, but a jumble of hieroglyphics. You see, the bezel is modestly sized at 3mm wide, and as a consequence the minute track is printed in orange on white, between other, similar looking markings, and in a single millimetre of the bezel real estate, which, unless you look dead straight at the watch, can be hidden under the tall crystal. Due to limited daily use, this wouldn't necessarily be a problem for the other scales, but this design approach, as well as the lack of contrast or any luminous markings, as was seen on the original, renders this bezel far less useful for most than the bezel of the C1000. Technically, therefore, the bezel is superb, but in practice is a somewhat limited tool. The bezel action, however, is fantastic, with the kind of unaltering clicks as can be felt on an Omega several times the price. This is something I'm thrilled to see retained from the C1000, which also had a fantastic bezel feel. Sitting beneath the crystal is a dial which is clearly modelled, as was the case in period, on that of the C1000 and features the same four applied markers, whilst the rest is printed in raised white paint. The dial markings are curious, but very distinctively O and W, with the brand at 12, the specifications at 6 and the model designation at 3. The result is very balanced, but more importantly, is exquisitely printed. For the price, this is likely the most flawlessly accurate printing you could expect to see, with a creaminess to give a vintage feel too. Of course, it's the dial fixtures which command the most attention, and are the applied indices at each quadrant, which, thanks to extremely sharp edges and a fantastic brushed surface, seem to tower over the dial to give real depth, if you'll excuse the pun. The hands match the strict, geometrical dial with rectangular forms and an oversized triangle second hand in brushed metal. In the dark, this watch is illuminated at its four corners and on its hands by orange superluminova, which provides consistent and useful legibility throughout the night. However, I can see why reducing the luminous application below the level of the C1000 by not offering a luminous bezel could pose a problem if you wanted to use the bezel in suboptimal lighting, let alone in full darkness. The new colour scheme chosen presents a different, less professional attitude taken by the ocean graph, with a matte dial surface and bezel in a full dull blue somewhere between forget-me-not and steel blue. This is offset by rich tangerine markers and white bezel text to create a feel of sunshine and sea. It's a captivating choice and a more engaging one than black, but also a more serious one than a richer, brighter hue. It's worth noting that, like the C1000, this watch comes only in one colour scheme, which I think is probably the right way of doing things to keep these watches simple and very specialised. Moving from the dial to the movement before addressing the case ergonomics, the movement chosen is an obvious but undeniably good one, the ETA2824, but there's more here than that. You see, Oleg and Weiss are very keen on producing watches which are genuinely Swiss made, not just 60% as is required by law. As a result, 90% of this watch and its packaging are Swiss in origin, 
and in this pursuit they've chosen to do something different with the movement. Rather than giving it lots of decoration, they've taken it apart, properly added their logo to the plates, and constructed and added their own rotor, a design which, from the looks of things, should balance and support the central bearing better than a regular counterweight, by the way. The result is a practical, automatic and manual movement, with a 38-hour power reserve which, whilst not able to offer the longer power reserve of Swatch Group watches at the moment, does give you more easy servicing and level of refinement which, for the price, they simply can't match. In reality, it's on the wrist that this watch really makes sense. If you look at the specifications, the Ocean Graph seems a minor alteration of the C1000, but if you wear the watch, you realise that all the brilliance of that watch is maintained in the looks, the construction and the quality, but in a very different flavour. The wider bezel gives the watch reflections the other simply couldn't provide, whilst the watch feels more compact as a result of the new proportions. A sign of just how much O&W have paid attention is seen inside the lugs. Aside from the outer, drilled holes which fit a bracelet or thicker strap, an additional pair of holes are added for thinner straps which will wear nearer the case and help the watch feel smaller for those who need it. This is very rare and shows serious attention. Of course there are negatives, and I'll address them for the sake of balance. I've already mentioned that the lack of luminescence on the bezel is a problem if you need the instant legibility of the C1000, and there's no real way around that. The Ocean Graph just doesn't provide quite such high legibility at night. The other downside is the strap seen on this particular example. The bracelet, as I've explored in the C1000 review, is a fantastic low-profile piece with a great feel, but this pearl-on strap feels a bit unfinished for the price due to the stripe being bonded off-centre to the rest of the strap, and the overall construction feeling somewhat cheaper than expected. This is a shame because the buckle is of beautiful quality, but with that being said, I'd always advise buying such a watch on the bracelet, and the Ocean Graph is no exception. On my 7-inch wrist, this watch wears very, very well. It seems long-lugged on paper, but for me strikes an ideal balance of curved case and strong angles to make it feel just right when you take into account how the case back sinks into the wrist. But then what's the verdict on the O&W Ocean Graph? Well, this isn't a watch aimed at as wide an audience as the C1000. That's clear from the outset based on the unique bezel, the bright colours, and the slightly higher price, the price being 1556 Swiss francs against the 1456 base price of the C1000. Even so, it's also a piece of history which is just as important as the first 1000 metre watch, as a consequence of that very bezel, which has been integrated into the modern design rather than simply being replicated, and that certainly deserves respect. So if the design of this watch appeals to you, why should it be considered over what is offered by its competitors? Well, let me suggest a few conclusions based on the watches most likely to be compared to it. This watch has a higher water resistance and better quality consistency than any Seiko I've seen at this price. It's undoubtedly better value than a Doxa. It's much more exclusive and historically important than any of the Longines remakes at the moment, and is probably the best alternative to an Aquadive. Altogether, I'd say that Olek and Weiss have created a heck of a watch, even if it's no longer the all-rounder which the C1000 is, by being something very different for a different kind of customer. But what do you think? Would you choose the Ocean Graph or the older C1000? Tell me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and to hit the bell icon for more. Thank you very much for watching. This is Armon from WatchChronicler.com. Out.